characterize the federal response here? How has it been since since the beginning? Incompetent. If we're talking about broadly speaking, limited to no personnel. Once they did get here, um, they they put themselves in positions, obviously, to try and create connections or contact or rapport or whatever it might be. But in the process, there's not been there's not been dedicated assistance or support. These guys again are coming in trying to figure out what the problem is and who's in charge while we're solving the problems. People don't care what's going to happen two weeks from now when they're starving. They need food, they need water, they need warmth. They need somebody to give them a hug and say, we're here to help, what do you need? Okay, so this brought me to tears. Um, yeah, I'm working on it. It reminds me of the time when I was shoveling out the sand out of my house, out of the basement, because we thought we were going to rehab the house that was oil-soaked from the oil tank that broke loose from its footings during Sandy because of the water pressure. And there was about 60 gallons of oil in it. I didn't get my delivery yet because we, I knew that I still had oil in it. And um, it used to be so cheap to heat my house because, number one, it was a tiny house. <laughs> It's a one bedroom and um, we built half, renovated half the basement with a full bath for my son, actually for my mom, but then she passed away in the nursing home. So my son moved downstairs. So it was a total redo, um, adjusted it for him, you know, his colors and things like that. Anyway. Um, shoveling out the sand and dragging the bags out to the street so that the garbage dumpsters can take them. They had big garbage trucks come with bulldozers to shovel the stuff into the dumpsters, into the dump trucks. Um, these three girls, maybe in 15, 16, 17, dragging this big huge box about three feet, four feet high down the street and they stopped while I was dragging the bag out and they stopped and they said do you need some clothes I'm like yeah because it was getting cold then because Sandy happened October 29th 2012 so this was a few days into November now right before my son's birthday November 9th and so my son came out of the house he came up out of the basement I was like you need a sweatshirt <laughs> he lost all of his clothes in the basement what he had on was all he had. So he grabbed a couple of sweatshirts, I think. One or two. I know I grabbed a red one, a heavy-duty one that you pull over your head. It didn't have the zipper. I still have that sweatshirt. It's now 2024. I don't wear it because of my arm. It got damaged after Sandy, during Sandy. And, um... So to put stuff over my head is a little difficult. I mean, I could still do it, but it might hurt. So I try not to, but I still have that shirt. And they stayed to talk to me and him about what happened and gave them all a hug. God bless those three girls. It was the only sane thing that happened to me afterwards. Because having to deal with FEMA, Red Cross, Geico for the motorcycles, and Allstate, never again, never again will I deal with Allstate. They called and called and called after I canceled them and said, oh no, come back. Like, no, no, we'll give you a deal. No, no, that ain't happening. I only chew my cabbage once. Thank you very much. Um, Yeah, and keeping house insurance on this house across the street from the whole Atlantic Ocean has been quite difficult. One company upstate, they couldn't even send me the bill. And they were coming from... No, I'm sorry, they weren't upstate. The one that I have now is from upstate. They put me through the grill to get um, signed up with them again. I had to make my home like better homes and gardens and it cost me a couple of hundred dollars just to do that. And then pay the premium. And the one that I had was cheaper than Allstate and had the same benefits. 
but they couldn't send me the bill from South Carolina for some reason. I wouldn't get the bill, and it's like, well, I'm not looking for bills to pay, and they canceled me. And, uh, oh, we're not, um, we're not re-upping, we're not, you know, adding on any more uh, New York policies, because I live across the street from the whole freaking Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, so it, it has been a battle the last seven years, and uh, worrying about the house in Deltona. Thank God it's just tree branches and stuff. And I'm sure my lovely neighbor on my left side uh, is going to throw her branches over my fence like she did the last time. When I get there, it's going to be a confrontation. And my other neighbor on the other side is keeping a trailer in my driveway. Not in my driveway, but on the side of my house. So it's not hurting anything right now, but it is going to be like put my foot on their neck when I get down there. They're going to be sorry, okay? And then I'm going to build my big white vinyl six-foot fence all over again. <sighs> yeah, a lot of emotions watching these videos and stuff and a lot of the memories that, um, from Sandy. Yeah, they're so fresh, very fresh. One girl had dark hair and shoulder length, and I remember her face. <sighs> yeah, believe it or not, certain things just stand out. Lovely girls, just beautiful people trying to help. And we had a guy who lived in Jersey who used to live in Staten Island while we were mucking out the house. Um, one cold, rainy Sunday, he's like, what can I get you guys? He came back with three Entenmann's cakes, three coffees, and some kind of fruit. I don't remember what it was. It was apples or oranges or something to keep our stamina up. What a nice guy, just out of the blue, driving by, and he saw us, you know, trying to, and he saw the condition of the yard, which I still see in my face, in my eye, in my brain, I still see it right now. I had a round red and white rug, um, as soon as you came in the front door, and it said one way on it, and no, yeah, it said one way on it, and I put it outside, because it was oil soaked so when you walked from the bottom of the steps up to the house at least you know like when you went down again the oil wouldn't be on your shoes oily disgusting water I wouldn't even let the dog in the house I wouldn't even let Jack in the house back then um, because of the smell because within a half an hour you got nauseous so walking in and out with bags of debris it wasn't too bad but to stay in there and pack up anything you had to have all the windows open during the the rest of the winter. So when we went there, the first thing I did was open all the kitchen windows and the front windows and the front door. <sighs> so you had to dress really warm to be able to pack up anything. So the tiny little figurines wrapped up in tissue paper and bubble wrap and all my little statues and stuff that I had inside my china cabinet. It took me three visits to do all of that because you couldn't stay there long. Um, and... The first month, I didn't have a car, so I had to wait for my husband to come home and take, you know, have him drive me over and whatever, and we would work on the house, although he didn't do much. I had to pack up his clothes. I had to wash his clothes at the laundromat to get the stench out three times and dry them. Um, yeah, and then moved to that horrible apartment on the second floor in the hood. Yeah, no not good. I made the best of it though. I really did. I painted the whole apartment. I painted the stairs going up to the second floor. It was classic um, Victorian black and white. And my landlord said that he had a whole wedding party standing on the stairs taking pictures um, before we moved in years ago. And I did the stairs going down into the yard. And then next door, there was a fire. We had a five alarm fire on my birthday. It's just like at 1.30 in the morning. Yeah, so it's been um, with the stuff that's going on with these people down in North Carolina. They're just devastated. At least I had some kind of a house and something to salvage. But these people have nothing. Nothing. So... My son had nothing. 
he had the clothes on his back and wet sneakers and everything and he dried them out and because we had to jump out the back bedroom window with the dog and two cats only at the time which are now dead years later Tinkerbell and Mosley <laughs> and they didn't even get one drop of water on them my son took took care of them I took care of the dog I lifted him up over the six foot fence in the middle of it all because my husband panicked and we had to jump out the back bedroom window after I was screaming at him no I don't want to go you know because I figured we were going to be in more danger the power was already out in the house and um, the basement was already flooded and the water was already coming up the stairs another eight inches and it would have been upstairs so we got about three four inches of water upstairs on a little one bedroom beach bungalow type of house five steps going up to the f to the porch the porch was the best thing ever that we built we only lost one support which my neighbor took which I don't know why like he should know that it was ours but you know whatever he um, he had to replace the whole side of his townhouse with the siding. The insurance company only wanted to pay for the bottom half that was destroyed by a half a dock coming in the yard because it floated over the fence. And it took out a panel of mine and it was stuck. But he had to cut it up and remove it with the sanitation department but I didn't see any of that but he told me about it afterwards but it popped out one of my panels I had to spend I spent three thousand dollars to build the fence around my house we had done the back wall but then we had the sides and the front done yeah well they were all gone so uh, we unscrewed all the panels that were still good because they were going to knock down the house after they finally figured out that that's what they were going to do they tested the house for um, asbestos and there was two percent in the linoleum tiles in the bedroom which if you would have left them there for another 40 years wouldn't have bothered anybody but if you touch them to remove them well we had built a wooden floor over it and leveled out the floor because the house had sunk because years ago, they used to have these beach bungalows across the street. Well, the federal government came in and said, well, we want to build a park over here. So all your houses are going to have to move. That was back in the 30s. This, the house was from 1936. It was built, and I have a picture of it. But it's in storage, along with the rest of my life. And, um, yeah, so they had to rip out the floor. And then they found the, the we wrote marker on the tiles underneath we did it on a Thanksgiving weekend and um yeah whoever finds this this is when we built the built the floor and um we did the sheetrock in the bedroom we did everything on this house we redid the kitchen broke my finger with the refrigerator falling on it thank you honey it still hurts <sighs> broke my ass on this house literally <laughs> and then to try and get out of it broke my back and my arm um, yeah, but I'm still here, but uh, I just, the, the, the whole reason for this video is to appreciate what you have. I know that is said and done and repeated thousands of times, but you have no idea when you have nothing. When I saw the woman standing there, she says, I lost my house. I lost my car. I only have the clothes on my back. And she said, they turned me down. It, it just rips me apart. Because I know the hell that I went through with FEMA. We went like 8 o'clock at night to go talk to FEMA agents in a tent in New Dorp. And I think they gave us $350. And that was it. Oh, and yeah, let me see that video uh, of your car washing away down the boulevard. Yeah, send it to this email address. I'd like to have it, you know. And my husband had caught it from our security cameras of my best car I ever owned. Um, 
best call we ever bought. Um, it flo it held my neighbor's wife's car back from floating down the boulevard, and it went rear-ended into the back of my fence when it landed. I can post a picture up, but anyway, um, yeah, in the back of it was 8 by 10 glossies of somebody's wedding on my block, so I laid them out to let them dry, and a woman came by, and I'm like, oh, these are yours, and she's like, oh, yeah, and I was like, okay, so just treasure everything you got, guys, have a good day.